So what is a graph? The easiest way to get started with this is just to draw one, and then we'll talk about it. All right, so there's an example of a graph. Um, these are nodes, they're referred to as nodes, sometimes also called vertices. Um, and then these connections between nodes, we'll refer to as edges, nodes and edges. So in this case, I have four nodes in my graph and I have four edges between them, but I could have more uh, or I could have the graph look a little bit different uh, like this, for example. Now, we've talked about trees previously and you might wonder, you know, what's the difference between the two? And we'll talk a little bit more about what a tree is, but you can almost think of a graph as a tree without rules. Uh, with a tree, we had rules about every node had to have one parent. There was a root node, uh, you know, a tree had a top or a bottom, depending on how you think about it, which is the root node and then kind of uh, moved from there or grew from there. With a graph, there's no top, right? This is still a graph. This is still a graph. There's no up on this graph. You might think that it looks a particular way, better a particular way. Uh, and sometimes when we render graphs, we, we uh, draw them in a particular way. Um, but there's really no, re there's no rules here. We've removed the rule that nodes have to have uh, one parent. And we've really removed the distinction between parents and children entirely. What we talk about here are the neighbors of a given node. So this node over here has one neighbor. This node has one, two, three neighbors. This node has two neighbors. Then this node also has two neighbors. So the number of neighbors is the number of nodes that a node is, has, is connected to. This is the simplest form of a graph. Uh, it's called an unweighted, undirected graph. And what we'll do now is I'll talk about the features of a graph that lead to these other uh, types of graphs, which we'll also you know, uh, re review in a minute. So every node right now, every edge you'll see connects two nodes, but it's also possible for the edges to have a direction to them, right? So let's draw something like this. So now I can go from this node to this node, but I, and I can go from this node to this node, and I can go from this node to this node, but I can't go in the other direction. So this is now what's called a directed graph. Uh, I can still have two nodes that are both connected in both directions, but I'm representing those connections differently. So I'm representing a connection in one direction differently than the connection in another direction to allow me to represent the fact that in this case, for example, I can move from this node to this node, but I can't travel in the reverse direction. And you can imagine, you know, there are certain graphs in real life that have this property, right? Where, you know, a friend graph, right? You know, this person might be friends with this person, but this person doesn't consider that person a friend, right? So directed graphs can be, can be quite useful. Um, the other thing I can do is I'm taking off my arrows here to go back to my undirected graph. Um, the other thing I can do is the edges can have labels or properties. Um, sometimes these are referred to as weights. And so again, let's go through here. I'll add some um, weights to these edges. And now the edges have properties. And you can imagine that this might represent something about the relationship between these two nodes. This might be the distance between the two nodes. Now this is a little bit confusing because you know these two nodes, like the distances to get here, don't add up. But that's sometimes that's how things work, right? It could work, it, it could represent like the cost to, to traverse between two nodes. It could represent the weight, like if this is a social graph, this might be the strength of a relationship between these two people, whatever. Um, and so I can have this is now a weighted graph. Um, what we started out with, if I take these off, simplest form of a graph, just nodes and edges, is an unweighted un. Uh, undirected graph. And usually we'll be working with unweighted graphs almost exclusively. Um, directed graphs we'll see a few times, but we'll usually be working with, with undirected graphs. Undirected graphs themselves have a tremendous number of applications and are incredibly useful. Um, the other thing too is frequently my nodes have some property, right, that I store them. So if you think about what we did with trees, um, this node might store a string or an int, or it might represent a person or something like that. So I might actually store data at each node. Frequently I store data at each node in a graph that represents something about the, uh, that node and helps me understand its relationship to the other nodes in the graph. Um, so this is the, the simplest possible graph. This is an unweighted, undirected graph. It consists of a series of nodes connected by edges. So these are my nodes made by edges. And usually the node stores some value or some property. Now, the last thing I want to point out is this idea with a graph being connected or unconnected. Um, 
So if you imagine, now I have six nodes, and if you look at all six of these nodes together, you could say that they represent a graph. Um, but that graph isn't connected because there are two nodes here where if I start at either one of these nodes, I can never arrive at any one of these four nodes. And similarly, if I start over here at any one of these four nodes, you'll see that I can make it from this node to any of the other four nodes that are in this cluster, but I can't make it to this group. And so this graph would be considered unconnected. To connect the graph, all I need to do is add an edge. So now from any node, and the property of a connected graph is that from any node in the graph, I can reach all other nodes in the graph. And you can convince yourself of this. So if I start here, can I get to this node? I can obviously get to all these nodes' neighbors. So this guy, this guy, and this guy, or this node, and this node, and this node. I shouldn't gender the nodes, probably. They're just nodes. Um, this node, this node, and this node. I can also get to this node through this node. And I can get to this node through this node. And if you, you can do this for all the other nodes in the graph. So this graph is now connected. Will be working with connected graphs. So when we have you do work on graphs, we'll give you a set of nodes. And those nodes will be connected to all of the other nodes in the graph. Uh, now, now for directed graphs, well, I don't want to get into that, so I'll, I'll stop there. So, so our, our definition of a graph, a series of nodes connected by edges, in many ways, this is a generalization or, a, you know, you can think of this as the parent of a tree in terms of data structures. A graph, uh, you know, a tree is a type of graph. But there are many other types of graph that aren't trees. And so graph is in some ways a much more general purpose data structure. And it turns out graphs can actually represent a lot of really interesting real world entities.